All right, welcome everyone. We're going to start the model for 6.4 section. And point, uh, section 6.4 uh, talks about creating user-defined statistics. And first we want to creating a state variable and to monitor the efficiency for, for example, uh, we did in 6.4 uh, and monitor this function called function efficiency. Also, we uh, intended to separate the assembly uh, after the process is done, and then we perform the uh, statistic uh, analysis based on that. So let's go over to see how we do that. Uh, first, we're going to create a state variable. Go to the definition section, state variable. And we're going to create a real uh, state variable. So this we're going to call this STA, uh, or in the textbook we'll call it GSTA, which is global state variable. It's, uh, it's re re referring to the model level state variable, and call efficiency. Ten. This variables is trying to uh, collect the uh, information for the function. So what do we do is <clears throat> we're going to monitor that. So here in this uh, Packer server, okay? So Packer server, when they enter the Packer server, we're going to do a state environment uh, assignment. Let's take a look how we do that. So here we have, on entering the Packer server, I'm going to add an assignment right here. And this is called a global stay. So I'm using some of the initial to describe uh, the thing so we can easily find that when we do an assignment. So I'm going to do the functional efficiency as a part of a so we're going to assign the functional efficiency into this <clears throat> particular uh, variable and keep track of them. And I can actually display on screen. Um, but also, I want to define a user-defined statistics call. Uh, let's do a state variable statistic. Okay. So state statistic, we call it efficiency. Okay, so what do we do right here is we're trying to, <clears throat> using a state variable statistic to keep track of the state variable we just defined. And here it says which state variable you trying to track. So actually is the, this variable we're trying to track, okay. And also, we're trying to categorize the output so we can see find them in the output. So category, we're going to call efficiency. OK, and data item is actually a number. So we, you can type anything you want, OK, and to organize. We'll show you more example later on. So here we're going to do it uh, last time uh, before we show you how to do a tally statistic and state variable statistic is the one to keep track of a specific state variable at model level and trying to collect the minima, uh, maxima and average value and confidence interval for that state variables. And that's <clears throat> what we do. So. And let's quickly run it to the end of the simulation. Okay. So simulation is done. Once we see the result, and we can easily find in the model level, see the object type is a model, and object name is also a model, but the data source is from the state statistics efficiency we just defined. And the category is this efficiency we customize. 
and the data items is also a number is a number so you can probably see that right now we have what efficiency averages is about 88.5 percent and final value is about 0.9 uh, final value at the end of a simulation its value is 0.9 and the maxima is 0.9. It never reaches 100% uh, of efficiency. All right, so this is pretty much for that part. And we go back, uh, we're trying to see how many entity are uh, <clears throat> done. Uh, this is for your homework uh, assignment part five, as you see that. So I want to separate the parts uh, before we take, uh, uh, let them go to the sink. So I'm deleting these three time path. Okay, and move this a little bit. And I'm going to use a separator down here. A separator actually separates, split the batch over here. Split the batch used to be batch. Then we're going to have three time path over here. And here, come to the separator. All the assembled <clears throat> uh, packet uh, uh, memory modules going to go to the separator. And the separator, after the separation, it has the pores going to go up from the parent nodes. And the members going to go down to uh, the member node. And also, we would like to separate uh, the uh, black chips and the red chips. So I'm going to do this. So one of them represent the access for the black chips and one of them represent the <clears throat> access for the red chips. Okay, I'm going to rename this. Oh black chips and this is going to be red okay just a little bit room here and um, i'm going to uh, like before we're going to add a transfer node down here to go either the black or the red based on their chip type Okay, you have a similar situation in your homework uh, problem five. You need to designate uh, the order to a different uh, destination. So here I'm going to just using a connector. And since the processing time is encounter, uh, already counted over here. So we're going to shoot it to transfer no one out here. Okay. Again, we can re uh, enter the tra travel time is 3.5 minutes. Okay. So this is straightforward. Okay. And just do a different statistic. So here, what we need to do in the transfer node, instead of going to shortest pass, I'm going to forward the entity based on the link weight. How do we define the link weight? Actually, link weight is pretty simple. Type uh, Chip type one going this way, chip type two going that way. So the link weight basically is model entity chip type Okay, if they equals to one, then I'm going up there. And here, if a model entity chip type equals to two, then I'm going this way. Why is that? Because based on the link way forwarding the parts, if chip types equals to one, this will return a truth, which is one. And this that evaluation would turn zero. So that means 100% is going this way. If chip types are equals to two, this passes away gonna be equals to yes, which means true. 
and they will be equals to one and the other link weight will be equals to zero. So that means 100% you're gonna go that way. So this is the way we show you how to divert uh, your entity to a different uh, downstream and uh, using a logical expression saying model type chip uh, model entity chip type equals to one then this link will have 100% away the other link is mutually exclusive condition will have a weight of zero and so on uh, vice versa and for this we're going to try to see uh, if we have a uh, label we can put it on how do we do that we've done this before input buffer <coughs> number of enter so see how many entity actually going into that particular <coughs> input buffer and same thing i'm going to do the same one more time input buffer number intern or you can say number exit it doesn't matter uh, for the sync for other places my actually matter but here what we have and then just we just want to know okay one more time oh sorry i just see this label i'm sorry Again, input buffer, number of enter. Okay, and we can change their background into a little bit prettier background. This one also change to dark background, but using uh, white character okay you can resize them so you can see let's run this <clears throat> and you can see how many bore got exit and how many corresponding times four equals to the blue and the red and this is pretty much uh what we <clears throat> have for 6.5 section we we'll see you in the next chapter we're going to elaborate this uh, example using a so-called add-on processes instead of using state assignment only and we'll see you in the uh, chapter 7